really liking what you do, what, whatever area that you get into, um, given that you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Uh, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also, if, if, you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. Well, I think the, 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 most, important, uh, the most important thing about uh, running a company uh, is to remember all the time what a company is. Um, a company is simply a group of people. Um, and uh, as a leader of people, uh, you have to be a great listener, um, you have to be a great motivator, uh, you have to uh, be very good at praising and looking for the best in people. Um, you know, people are no different from, from flowers. If you water flowers, they flourish. If you um, praise people, they flourish. And, um, and that's a critical attribute of, um, of a leader. I actually think determination is probably the biggest piece. You know, it's um, so many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make and not giving up. Right, and I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it, it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn, and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. When something's not quite good enough, do you stop and make it better or do you just ship it? Mm. You know, and everybody watches when you, to see how the senior management makes those decisions. And, what we've tried to do is stop and make it great before we ship it. And we have problems, stop and fix them. And, and by example, uh, uh, you can say anything you want, but everybody watches very carefully when you're in a difficult situation mm -hmm. how, what decisions you make, do what you, values you have. They would like to know how you do it. And, you know, it's probably very not, that's not, that, it's probably not easy to do. Yeah, you know, we try to hire really smart people, but we have a very simple organization, mm -hmm. and we try to focus and do very few things well. And focusing's hard, because focusing doesn't mean saying yes, it means saying no. So we, say, we, we decide not to do a lot of things, so we can focus on oh. a few handfuls of things and do them well. And um, I think, uh, you know, everybody working at a company wants to do something great. Mm -hmm. They want to be excited about what they're working on, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they want to be recognized for it uh, when, if they do a really great job. So we just try to allow people to do the best work of their lives. Never chase the hot thing, whatever it is. That's, that's like trying to catch the wave, and you'll never catch it. You need to position yourself and wait for the wave. And the way you do that is you pick something you're passionate about. So th that's the number one piece of advice that I give to somebody who wants to start a company or, or start a new endeavor inside of a bigger company, make sure it's something you're interested in, something you're passionate about. Missionaries build better products. And so I would take a missionary over a mercenary any day. Mercenaries want to you know, uh, flip the company and get rich. Missionaries want to build a great product or service. and you know. And one of those great paradoxes, it's usually the missionaries who end up making more money anyway. But, so that's one, pick something you're passionate about. And the second is, start with the customer and work backwards. That's, it, it, those two things, passion and customer centricity, will take you an awful long way. The hardest thing to do is start. Um, you have all these ideas and everyone has an idea, but it's really about executing the idea and building the idea and attracting other people to help you work on the idea. That is the biggest challenge. But the, the way to begin is to get the idea out of your head, draw it out, you know, um, talk about it, program it if you're a programmer, or make it if you're building something. Uh, if you're going to try something innovative, then, then you're in unexplored territories. So the odds that uh, something will go wrong are, are pretty high. Uh, if, you know, it's only if you try to do something that is already well understood that um, there's Little, little chance of failure, um, yeah. but then it will not be uh, interesting or innovative. Um, 
So, you know, for sure, uncharted territory will result in um, failures uh, necessarily. Otherwise, you're not trying hard enough. We're long-term oriented. So I uh, ask everybody to not think in two to three year time frames, but to think in five to seven year time frames, to not think about, when somebody says to me, congratulates Amazon on a good quarter, um, which is a very common thing to say. You meet somebody, they're being nice, they looked at your financial results for the quarter, they're like, good quarter. I say thank you. But what I'm thinking to myself is that quarter, all that, those quarterly results were actually pretty much fully baked about three years ago. And so like today, I'm working on you know, uh, a quarter that is gonna happen in 2020, not next quarter. Next quarter, uh, for all practical purposes, is done already, and it's probably been done for a couple of years. Um, and so if you start to think that way, um, it changes how you spend your time, how you plan, um, where you put your energy, um, and, and your ability to look around corners gets better. So many things improve if you can take a long term. And by the way, it's not natural for humans. So it's a, it's a discipline that you have to build. The, um, the kind of, you know, uh, get rich slowly schemes are not big sellers on uh, infomercials. You know, it's, uh, and so that's something that you have to sort of steal yourself for and discipline and teach. Um, uh, over time. One of the things I advise entrepreneurs to do is when you have an idea, so a classic entrepreneurial impulse is to hold the idea close to you and not go tell people because, oh, the idea is so special. Right. That's almost always a mistake. Hmm. Go talk to Why every, is that a mistake? Yeah. It's a mistake because your actual real competitive advantage is not that you have this idea that you have locked away in your closet which may or may not be accurate and you have no idea which it is. Uh, your, your actual competitive advantage is if you're assembling the intelligence around does this idea work, what is the right team, mm -hmm. what is the right learnings, and we're essentially in motion. Don't necessarily think that you have to have the home run and the huge Apple computer on your first start. I spent a long time in my life with skills just building little devices for fun. For fun is one of the key things because that drives you to think and think and think and make it better and better and better than you ever would if you're doing it for a company. Build things at first for yourself that you would want. For somebody aspiring to you know, take things to the next level or to even surpass their wildest dreams, there's always going to have to be an element of luck. But I think more important is putting yourself in a business that can be ubiquitous, that, that, can, that really doesn't have limits. Because otherwise, there's always going to be a grind to it. But if the business, if, if, if it can't be something that you can visualize every business using or every consumer using, it's going to be tough to scale to be big enough or to have the perceived value. It's never stop thinking about how to delight your customer. Not to satisfy your customer, but to delight your customer. And when you wake up in the morning, start thinking about it. During the day, think about it. At night, think about it. And then dream about it. And no company has ever failed that, that had millions of delighted customers. And you start with them and you get them one at a time. Constantly seek criticism. Yeah. Uh, a, a, well, a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold. Um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. Um, usually your friends know what's wrong, but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you. Um, so they lift you up so they'll look your, uh, yeah, yeah, so they you know, they'll say, oh, I wouldn't encourage my friends, so I'm, gonna t I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product. Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right, uh, but very often they are right. Um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, if you're looking for, basically, you, you should take the approach that, that you're wrong. Um, you know, that, that, that you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong that I have to want this to exist in the world. I have to not, so it's a similar rule, just say, if this was successful and I had nothing and I got no, and I was not involved and I got no money off it or wasn't, would I want it to do well? And that's a great check, I think, to know if you really feel good about the idea and can be passionate about it. <laughs>